Hi, I'm Phil Dooley and today I'm chatting with plasma physicist Peter DeVries. Thanks for coming along, Peter. Hello, Phil. Thanks for joining us. Um, what have you brought along with you? Uh, well, this is a Jacob's Ladder. Ah, and what does it do? It makes plasma. It makes plasma, a plasma physicist's favourite toy. So, uh, show me. Yep. Wow. That's pretty easy. Flick of a switch and you've got plasma. That's right. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, well, first of all, you can see these uh, two copper plates. Uh, we apply a very two, uh, high voltage in over them, so there's a difference of about 10,000 volts right. between the two plates. And that ionizes the air in the small gap at the bottom. Right. And this creates uh, a plasma, an arc, right. uh, and that this arc rises to the top where the gap gets too big in order to sustain the arc. Right. But why does it go up? Because, of course, the, the, the plasma gets hot. Uh, right. And hot air goes oh, up. Hot air rises, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's, that's quite obvious, really. Yeah. So is this a lightning strike? Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, only uh, a lightning strike will be, of course, over a much larger distance with mm -hmm. a much higher voltage. Yeah. This is a lightning strike over a very small gap uh, right. with a lower voltage, but in this case still about 10,000 volts. Right, so, uh, so the easiest thing to do, obviously, would be to get it really close together, is that right? That is what you would think. If you make the gap too small, it will not work. Uh, if you make the gap too big, it will also not work. Oh, okay, so you've got to get it just right. Just right. Why is that? Well, like most people probably would think that you would need a voltage in order to ionize, to create the plasma. You have to pull the atoms apart. So you have to pull the electrons in one direction and mm -hmm. the ions in the other direction. But that is not the only process that ionizes the plasma. Each electron is accelerated in the electrical field and collides with the other atoms and creates more uh, ion and electron pairs. Right, so you actually end up with a whole lot of them all flowing together. I mean, I guess that's why yeah. it's such a big, that's more than one electron we can see. Yes, flowing and, backwards and, and, and forwards. what you get is an avalanche process. Uh -huh. So is this the same thing as goes on inside JET? Um, exactly, not identical, but yeah. very similar. Well, can you explain it to me on the diagram over here? Yeah, yeah we okay. can go there. So, where in JET is the gap? Where we, we, we had our spark on the machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you would think, like JET, as you can see, is a, a torus. Uh -huh. um, and we make the plasma in this toroidal shape. So uh -huh. Basically, the gap should be infinite, because that's where we want to make the plasma. Uh -huh. We have an infinite gap. Uh, but that is, of course, not the reality. The, the plasma or the particles are confined by this toroidal magnetic field that we have. Um, but this is not pure toroidal, so the magnetic field lines wobble a little bit. And mm -hmm. then in the end, they will just go around and around. And after several kilometers, we just hit the wall. Uh, right. And that is basically the gap we have. So we have a gap of several kilometers. So you must need huge voltages for that, like lightning, you know, millions, yeah. billions of degrees. You would think that because like you saw at the, the Jacobs ladder we needed 10,000 volts for about half a centimeter. Uh, but of course uh, we don't break down in air. Uh, here we break down in, in pressures that are about a million times less than an atmospheric pressure. Uh, so a lot less, so l larger gap but a lot less pressure and therefore we can break down at uh, very small voltages, only a few volts. So is this to do with the collisions that we were talking about That's before? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so it, because there's less pressure, it travels further before it collides. Yeah. So the, the, the electrons will collide in this case, instead of several milli, mi micrometers, they will travel several meters before they collide. But right, of course, okay. it also takes several kilometers before the electrons will reach the Going anode, the which is the wall here. Right. Basically. But you still haven't told me how we actually, what, 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 what the gap is. Where, where are there electrodes in here? Because you, you would think, like, if I stick an anode and a cathode in, then I can make the plasma, and I need that. But, of course, you only get an arc in between mm. those two points, and you want to get it to go around Traveling, totally. yeah. We apply transformer action. Mm -hmm. And in this central bit here, in the middle, is a very big coil. Mm -hmm. uh, and on that coil, we apply a voltage. Uh, so that is a change in flux. And to compensate for that, there will be another voltage going around Right. In the torus. So, so the, we, we the gas itself becomes the secondary coil. That's right. And so once that's happened, then we've got plasma. We're away. We, we're doing fusion, aren't we? Uh, not, not completely yet. I mean, like we, we end up at the end of this 
kind of breakdown phase mm. uh, after we have had the, the avalanche process with the plasma which is probably 100,000 amps mm -hmm. and temperatures of something like several tens of electron volt, hundreds of electron mm -hmm. volts, so mm -hmm. a million degrees. Right. From that point we have to further increase the, the plasma current in jet to several million amperes and also uh, the temperature needs to go even higher to something like a hundred million degrees in oh. order to get uh, sustained fusion plasma. Okay, you make it sound easy. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> Thank you for your time today. That's My been pleasure. very informative.